Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'd like to do a nice comparison video between Weebly, which is an online platform where you can basically have a website online without having your own server, and WordPress, which is a package that you can basically put up on any web server, it's PHP based, a lot, I think even the greatest number of websites out there right now are running on WordPress over any other what's called a content management system, which is uh, basically a, a compilation of these different PHP scripts that let you see um, like the back end of a website to be able to create posts, pages, all that other stuff rather than having to write a website from scratch. Um, so these are both pretty popular, um, but I think I would recommend them for different purposes. So we can see on the Weebly editor, it looks pretty nice. You have a drag and drop interface, which is going to be useful for those people who don't necessarily have a huge amount of technological skills or someone who can come help them on the cheap to set up their website. Now you can get stuff like a page builder on WordPress and I definitely want to be fr uh, fair about that because what you would do is over on the plugins tab for WordPress, you can set up well, a lot of plugins or extensions that you would add on to your base WordPress package to give it extra functionality. Uh, now, it's not hard to get them. There's a, uh, basically, if you click this add new, there's a lot of plugins in the WordPress repository and everything you see here is able to be installed for free. Uh, with the caveat that most of the good plugins also have some features that you have to pay premium for. So you might get something like Yoast SEO or uh, some of these page builder plugins, but they won't give you every feature for free. So it's like free to try, but if you want to get all the features, you're going to have to pay a little bit more on top of that. Um, so that's all well and good. We can uh, kind of, let's add a page here because I do have the page builder by site origin installed on this test site. And we'll go into the page builder interface so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, so we can add uh, different widgets or rows and columns and that kind of thing here. So widgets are just going to be uh, kind of different sections. The, the same kind of thing you see here where you drag and drop them on the page. That, that's what it's talking about by a widget. So you might have like a list of pages and all those are things that can also go on the sidebar in WordPress. Um, or a, a button. Now you might want to have a button on your main page for instance. So you would just go in here and click edit rather than having to know the HTML code and all of that uh, you, you would come in here and edit it and yeah apparently you have to install extra plugins I forgot about that so site origin widgets bundle we can install that just by clicking that and activate it um, you kind of get the sense that on WordPress you're going to have to install a lot of different plugins like this anti-spam plugin Akismet uh, very useful if you don't like your blog getting um, hit up with lots of spam content from bots on the internet. Okay, so let's uh, refresh this page here, and then we'll go back in and edit that again. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so page builder, add a widget, and we can choose from these widget bundles. So, say origin, and we added that. So we can put in button text, the color of the button, all those other kind of things. Uh, pretty simply by using a third-party plugin inside of WordPress. But once again, going back to Weebly, the nice thing is that most of that stuff that you would really look for as a typical uh, user administrator of a small business, a lot of it's just kind of included out of the box. So you're editing your home page here and you want to add something. It's the same kind of deal. We can just drag it in here and we add a title. Um, so click to edit and we can say, this is the best business of all time, exclamation mark. And maybe we want to center that text to bold it and increase the font size. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, whoops. Okay. Let's leave it at that. So you get the idea. Um, now in WordPress, you can of course type up pages using HTML tags and all that, but that's a really inefficient way of doing things and I wouldn't so much recommend that. Okay, so I have a big spreadsheet over here. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Uh, I'll also include this in the uh, description for this video so that everybody who wants to go and download this can. 
So let's see, out of the box, uh, newsletter contact form page builder. Yep, Weebly does have that. So if you want to collect, like, let's say, uh, newsletters or, or subscription signups for newsletters, we would just drag the newsletter form in and people would sign up with the email there, subscribe to the newsletter, and then you can use Weebly Promote in order to email all of them. Now, you can do that in WordPress, but you got to integrate with the third-party plugins. And in many cases, uh, you're going to end up having to pay a premium anyway, um, especially with newsletter services. If I recall, uh, they tend to make you pay after you have a certain number of subscribers. Um, and, and I should point out, in fairness, uh, the newsletter in Weebly, it is limited on the free version. So if you're going to want to send out, I think it's more than two per month, you have to upgrade to the pro uh, for Weebly. So uh, I guess we can mention costs, since, that, since that's definitely one thing that everybody's going to want to know. So Weebly is free to try, and WordPress is free to download. The code for WordPress is completely open source. You can download it, you can put it on your home computer, if you know how to set up a local host web server. Uh, you can put it on triple uh, o freehost.com or whatever it's called. Uh, that's the one I'm hosting this test site on, triple o webhostapp.com. Um, in most cases, though, you're going to want to pay for web hosting. That might be something like DreamHost or HostGator um, to get basically the best quality of a host, the fastest one, uh, maybe one of the packages that's specially targeted towards making WordPress sites run fast. That kind of thing, if you're serious of running a business, you're going to want to have that premium web hosting. So the alternative on Weebly, because Weebly is hosted by Weebly, you can't really download it and stick it on an offline website. Everything's through their online interface, and that's going to mean um, if you want to unlock all the features, like not just uh, being able to send out more newsletters, but you can also see embedding HD video and audio and things like that. But apparently not YouTube uh, does require a premium. I guess that would be if you upload it directly to your Weebly site rather than linking to YouTube. Uh, then you're going to need to upgrade to one of the uh, Weebly Pro packages. So I have a tab over here. You can see the plans. Uh, Starter Pro Business Performance, all priced accordingly. And it goes from $8 a month to $38 a month. Probably most people aren't going to need to go for the business or performance unless you're running a really serious website. Um, in which case, the, the cost of $25 a month shouldn't really mean anything to you. Um, because at the end of the day, if you're, if you're going to build a serious website, you're going to need to pay for developer or design support on your serious sites. Uh, now, with Weebly, you might still need some of that, but the thing is going to be that on Weebly, since everything's hosted there, uh, and when you pay for the premium packages, you get access to their email and phone support, um, and you don't have to manage the back end yourself. So that's like a stability thing. That's all Weebly's responsibility. Um, you don't need any third party support. Uh, you're not going to have to fix things yourself and you won't really need to hire a developer to come in and do PHP code on your site. Um, as far as I know, and, and I have done a little bit of research into it, looking into developing Weebly plugins myself, you can't really even do PHP code with the Weebly plugins, uh, which is kind of unfortunate because that does limit you a bit, but um, I guess they don't want you just putting code on there, which can really mess things up. So everything you write as a Weebly customization, the themes or plugins do run on JavaScript, once again, as far as I know. Now, uh, you can get premium or free plugins for both in addition to the Weebly stuff. If you look at Weebly, you might think, well, it kind of does everything. You, you can set up a store for free, um, you can, uh, but when you do set it up for free, uh, worth mentioning, Weebly does take a cut. You can see that on their starter page. Uh, so the starter package, 3% transaction fee, and you're only allowed to have up to 10 products. But if you go business, it's unlimited, and you don't pay any Weebly transaction fees. I would assume that that also does mean if they check out through PayPal, that PayPal fees are still a thing, but at least you're not paying anything to Weebly. Okay, but yeah, you might assume that uh, basically all the functionality in Weebly is self-contained, and for the most part, that's kind of pretty true. Weebly does a pretty decent job of trying to include everything you might want to put on. Google AdSense, you can see you can include that as a block. Um, 
If you want to list products on a page, you can do that. If you want to set up more pages or install one of the themes, you can do that. But there is actually a Weebly marketplace for third-party uh, plugins and third-party um, themes as well. So, uh, just like with WordPress, you might end up paying for a premium theme. Or if you really wanted to invest a lot or you really needed that heavy customization, you could still get a, a, a very customized theme made by a design development team, which is going to cost quite a bit of money if you want to go that way. Uh, that's the whole reason that premium themes exist, uh, so that you can get a good-looking theme for a lot less than it costs to get full customization. So uh, speaking of that customization, going back to the point, um, since WordPress is open source, you put it on a server, and everything is just kind of there. It, you can mess it up yourself. You can blow up the whole site if you want. Um, basically, whoever's in charge or whoever has access to that file system is also going to need to maintain it. So um, in, in WordPress, some of the plugins might be out of date, for instance. And you go ahead and you install an out-of-date plugin, and then it really causes things to crash on your website. You might need to restore to an earlier save, um, or backup, rather. Or you might need to hire someone to go in and fix it. And all of those things do become costs that get audited on. So, well, WordPress might be free, and if you are super tech-savvy, you can fix all the things yourself. Remember, time is money, though. Uh, but... Having a real WordPress site, not just like a dinky little blog, is going to cost money. Um, or it's going to cost quite a bit of time. So, in a way, if you wanted to minimize that, it does make some sense to go ahead and try the Weebly packages. Because what you get out of Weebly is you don't have to worry about the back end. You do get access to phone and email support, which is nice. That can help reduce the amount of contacting a third party you need to do. Um, and there are still plugins and, and that kind and themes that can help support those areas where Weebly falls back on, because uh, I think the number was Weebly has 40 million accounts right now, so obviously some people out there are going to be trying to sell stuff or trying to upload their own plugins and themes to the Weebly marketplace. Um, and then because of the nature of Weebly, because it's trying to be this self-hosted pack, uh, not self, self-hosted in the sense that it's done by Weebly, package that makes it easy on um, basically average end users, people who just kind of want a drag and drop interface and just for it to work, it might make sense if that's um, kind of the thing you're trying to go for. It, Basically, setting up something like an e-commerce site or a personal blog website with minimum frustration, that's where Weebly would be good for. If you want something that's as customizable as possible, um, a content management system like WordPress or Drupal or Joomla, uh, does, Joomla does make some sense because uh, you have access to all the source code. Uh, you can write PHP, you can write JavaScript, you can customize pretty much everything. Uh, you can't customize everything if you have the time to do it. Uh, it, it all kind of comes down to how much custom stuff do you want? Because custom stuff is either going to be time expensive if you're developing for yourself, or it's going to be uh, money expensive if you're hiring uh, professionals out there to do it. Um, yeah, and also, I think I mentioned this, but keep in mind, uh, since you're hosting everything on Weebly, you don't need to pay for a third-party service, um, something like HostGator or DreamHost, where you pay like five, ten, maybe twenty dollars a month, depending on the hosting package, in order to get uh, premium web hosting. So, in a way, like if you're already going to pay ten dollars a month for the web hosting, paying ten dollars a month for Weebly is kind of the same deal, except you also get a package which is easier to maintain, easier to work with, yada yada yada. So, um, I wouldn't necessarily say one's better than the other, and I think they both definitely have their own purposes, but hopefully this video has given you some good ideas uh, about the differences between Weebly and WordPress as two different products, one trying to make it so you can make your own websites or have people make your own very custom websites for you, and Weebly trying to be that easy-to-use interface where you can make a website that looks good, maybe it's not as customized, but it can definitely do the job of like an e-commerce website or a blog or anything like that that you might need a 
uh, a uh, basic to typical website purpose form. So I've been Chris. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this comparison between Weebly and WordPress for the year 2017. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you all in my future video content.